What's going on everyone? It's Justin here and we've got the brand new MacBook Pro 2023 with the M2 Pro and M2 Max processors. And in front of me, I have the 14 inch model that I'm going to be unboxing. So I've personally been a user of the MacBook Pro 14 inch for the past couple years now. And it is honestly the most complete computer that I've used to date when it comes to a great display, great form factor, a pretty good port and IO selection, but most importantly, the performance has been incredible. Before I switch over to Apple Silicon for my desktop setup, I had been using the MacBook Pro 14 inch with the M1 Max processor, and it has just been incredible when it comes to doing video editing on the road, DaVinci Resolve for color grading, and I'm so excited to test out this new generation and see just how much power they have added to this year's model. So the spec that I have specifically is the one with the M2 Max processor with 64 gigabytes of unified memory that you can spec up to 96 gigabytes for the first time, as well as a 38 core GPU and 12 core CPU paired with two terabytes of internal storage. If you guys enjoy early Apple coverage, just go ahead and make sure you subscribe to the channel, drop a like in this video and leave a comment down below as to any questions that you might have of this new generation MacBook Pro. And I'll definitely try to answer them in my full review, but let's just go ahead and jump right into the unboxing. So jumping into the unboxing here, you can see the box is very familiar. There's that dark theme wallpaper on the front and I'm really happy with the form factor of the 14 inch MacBook and that is the one that I went with once again. The 16 inch one is also really good if that is like your primary computer when it comes to editing. But personally, because I just use the MacBook on the road and instead use a Mac Studio when I'm at home, I've really enjoyed the Apple ecosystem of Apple Silicon, but I do like to go with the more portable option and I also really enjoy the MacBook Air M2 as well. So let's just go ahead and lift up the box here. I'm gonna place this on the side if it wants to stand. And here we have the MacBook itself and its paper packaging. And I'm actually going to set it up and use it for a couple days and give you guys my initial observations as to what I've noticed when it comes to the performance in video editing, as well as in the slight improvements in battery life and also the Wi-Fi 6E performance. So this is a space gray one. It also is available in the silver option. And I personally have really enjoyed sticking to space gray, but I have also checked out the space black on the MacBook Air. And I just find that even though it looks really good, this is just a much safer option in terms of keeping it looking clean. Some of the other pieces included in the box include the power brick as well as the MagSafe cable. And this is pretty typical, but there are some changes. This year's MagSafe cable and end actually matches the color of the MacBook Pro that you choose, which is only available in silver and the gray. So even though it isn't a functional feature, it's still a small, nice touch. So there you have it. It is the Apple starting menu. It turns on by itself right away. And some of the other improvements when it comes to the M2 processor, which is the main change here, is you should expect about a 20% improvement in the CPU performance, as well as about a 30% improvement in the GPU performance. And you can now spec it up to 96 gigabytes of unified memory with the M2 Max. I've had experience with the Pro processors, as well as the Max, and also on the Ultra for the Max Studio. And generally speaking, the Pro has actually been incredibly good when it comes to performance for most people out there. You don't necessarily need to spec it up, but I do feel like if you're doing video editing specifically or things that may utilize a lot more bandwidth, then obviously spending that extra money and jumping up to the max is going to be good in the long run and you're not really going to be disappointed in the money spent. I've definitely found that the max processor was already able to handle pretty much everything that I threw at it, but where the ultra on like the Mac studio, for example, as well as a larger bandwidth really came in handy is if I had very large batches and had many layers of like noise reduction as well as stabilization and all that added where a task that could traditionally take quite a few hours can save you a noticeable amount of time by making that extra jump. So I think that's sort of the explanation when you're trying to decide between the M2 Pro, the M2 Max, as well as deciding if you should jump up to 96 gigabytes of unified memory, because that is something that you cannot upgrade in the future. 
Some of the other notable improvements also include the Wi-Fi speed. It now supports up to Wi-Fi 6E, which is able to let you connect to six gigahertz bands beyond just the two gigahertz and the five gigahertz. And in terms of real world tests, this is gonna be something that is interesting to compare. And when it comes to battery life, you have a relatively slight bump there as well, which is always good. But I feel like for anyone who has the last generation of MacBook Pro from 2021, you really don't have a reason to upgrade unless you're jumping from maybe like the M1 Pro model and wanting to jump up to the M2 Max with like 96 gigabytes of unified memory. If you really enjoy that experience and want to take it to the next level for your main computer, then that's where I think it could make sense. But otherwise, the previous generation is already very solid. Another great element is the HDMI 2.1 support, which allows you to plug it into up to an 8K display at a 60 hertz resolution or a 4K display at up to a 240 hertz resolution. Personally, I've just been using the Apple Studio display as well as the Pro Display XDR. So I wouldn't really take advantage of the HDMI port, but if you want to connect it to some very large screens or be able to have that refresh rate, then having the HDMI 2.1 is just a really good like future-proof feature in 2023 as displays reach higher resolutions and more standardized refresh rates that are above 60 Hertz. So I'm gonna go ahead and set this computer up and let you know what my initial observations are from the experience of the new M2 Max processor configured with 64 gigabytes of unified memory. And also stay tuned because I'm also gonna be doing some videos and desk setups of the new M2 Mac Mini, which is an incredible starting point price for anyone who is looking for great performance. And I think that is just so exciting for creatives. Thank <laughs> you.